The girl was carried into the oven by her father. He looks at his wife and immediately shuts Lilith in the oven. The loud slamming of the door woke the girl. She screams desperately and kicks the oven door open in an attempt to escape. But the father stomped her to the floor without mercy. He pulled her by her hair. Her mother taped her mouth shut. Soon the two of them were working together to shove Lilith into the oven again. And this time, the parents were more cautious than before. No matter how hard she struggled, they would never give her another chance to escape. Lilith ripped the tape off her mouth and pleaded with her parents, promising to be good in the future. But the parents didn't stop. They continued to tape the oven shut. They made sure the oven was completely sealed. And then they flipped the switch. The oven was instantly ablaze. Then they stared at their daughter in the oven. A few days later, they were caught in court, and they didn't say a word in their defense. They confessed that they had wanted Lilith dead countless times since the day she was born. But each time, they never succeeded. What did the parents go through to do this to Lilith? Emily is a social worker, specializing in family conflict resolution. She's resolved 38 family disputes. This is her 39th case, but this is the weirdest family she's ever seen. A family of three, each with their own ulterior motives. And Edward never spoke to her, but always let his wife tell his opinion. Emily asked why he didn't just answer. Margaret said he didn't like to yell. And then Edward stared at Emily with a fierce glare, as if he's going to flip the table next. Margaret, as if she were a puppet, showed no expression during the interview. Lilith, on the other hand, sat her day on the couch and didn't say a word. Whoever saw this would think there was something wrong with this family, right? Emily didn't get any information. All she could do was go back to the office and complain to her friend about what a strange family they had. But her friend said that as long as nothing happened to the family, she was fine. The next day, the family came to talk to Emily. Lilith Saturday between her parents and acted threatened. So Emily knew she was probably being abused. She called Lilith out alone and told her she could help her and that she should feel free to speak up. Lilith immediately burst into tears and said, They're sending me to hell. The next day, Emily came back to Lilith and gave her a phone number. She told Lilith to call her if she was in danger. She got a call from Lilith that night, but she hung up as soon as Lilith said hello. Emily immediately drove to her house and called her co-worker. By the time they arrived at Lilith's house, Lilith was about to be cooked in the oven. In the heat of the moment, her co-worker slammed the door and pulled Lilith out of the oven. The couple was found mentally ill and sent to prison for hurting their daughter. Lilith was orphaned. Emily took pity on her and adopted her as her own. But one thing led to another. Emily's boyfriend came home to a phone call. There was a buzzing sound on the other end. He felt a sudden discomfort in his ear. So he went to use a cotton swab to clean it. Jake pulls a live hornet out of his itchy ear. Jake's biggest fear was this kind of thing. So he threw it down the toilet and flushed it down the drain. He thought he was hallucinating. But then a second wasp and a third one slowly crawled out of his ear. Jake stomped them to death in fear. Then more wasps erupted from his ears. Jake swatted around the room like a madman before he finally killed them all. But as soon as he stood up, he realized his whole back was surrounded by wasps. He carefully took off his shirt and threw it into the bathroom. It didn't help. Within a minute, he was surrounded by thousands of wasps. Jake eventually lost his breath. And strangely enough, the room of wasps disappeared without a trace. No one knew that this 10-year-old girl was controlling everything. Emily was inconsolable when she attended his funeral. Lilith reached out to hold her hand, but Emily shrugged it off as if she wasn't looking, because she remembered her boyfriend saying he felt threatened, and that's how she connected his death to Lilith. Emily went to Lilith's house to investigate. She found several locks on the door to Lilith's parents' room. The locks appeared to be keeping something out. She also found a lot of scratches on the floor. It looked like something big had been moved. Lilith's house also had a big hole in it, as if they were planning to bury Lilith. When she arrived at the prison, she saw that Lilith's mother had lost her mind, so she had to see Lilith's father. But what she didn't expect was that the first thing the man said was, who died this time? It turns out that Lilith's family has been dying ever since she was born. That's why they believe that their daughter Lilith is not a human being, but a demon. In order to prevent further deaths, they decided to put Lilith in the oven. Emily was scared and wanted to get rid of Lilith. Then she went to the courthouse and filed a petition to find Lilith's new adopted parents. The worker said it would be a pain in the ass to process or rescind the adoption. It would take some time for her to process the application. Emily went home scared and put several locks on her room. At night, she locked the door and lay in bed with a knife. Lilith kept knocking on the door. 
Emily sat her day in the corner and listened to the door. After a minute, the knocking stopped. Emily opened the door, but there was nothing outside. But then she turned her head and suddenly saw a ghostly face. She was so scared, she ran away. And that's not even the scary part. This woman was running in the rain. She runs up to a bus and slaps the door and tells the driver to open it because someone is after her. The driver had to open the bus door. Emily gets on the bus, calms down a little bit, then gets off the bus and sees that there's no one there. She was about to drive away from the place when a voice came from the back seat. She turned around and saw Lilith. Lilith threatened her. You have to do what I say. The two of them were in the same car, so Emily had no choice but to give in to her demands. The next day, she went to see Lilith's father. He said the only way to get rid of her was to kill Lilith. Emily went to a friend for help, then her friend went out with a gun. Emily also got a prescription for sleeping pills from the doctor and planned to kill Lilith while she slept. But as soon as her friend got in the car, a wolf appeared in the back seat. Then the wolf jumped at him and bit him hard on the neck. He fired a single shot and lost his breath. And Emily was devastated by the news. Her only help was dead. Then she rushed out of the room and threw the TV on the floor. Then she pointed out the door and told Lilith to get out. Lilith calmly continued to eat her popcorn. Emily flipped over the popcorn bucket. <laughs> Lilith immediately gets an eerie, frightening look on her face. Emily gave in and realized she was evil. So she hid in her room and blocked the door with all the furniture. Lilith was at the door, pleading with Emily to open it. Emily didn't believe her this time, but soon Lilith began to break down the door. It wasn't long before the locks couldn't hold. Emily went right under the bed. Lilith got down on the floor and threatened Emily to get out from under the bed. When Emily didn't move, she crawled under the bed as a spider. Emily was terrified and asked her what she wanted. All Lilith wanted was for Emily to be her real mother. Emily's nodding finally calmed her down. Then she spiked Lilith's tea with sleeping pills. And while Lilith slept, she doused the room in gasoline and set the house on fire. Soon the whole house was surrounded by fire. Emily stared at it with indifference, thinking the nightmare was finally over. But she soon realized that Lilith had also escaped from the house. Emily had no choice but to take her to the hotel. And that's when she decided to go down with the devil. So she turned the car the other way and ended up in the river. Lilith's true face was revealed when she fell into the river. Emily pressed her head firmly into the water and escaped from the car. She sits on the edge of the river and stares at the sinking demon and realizes that it's finally over. The little girl in the movie is so cute, but she's a demon. Don't judge a book by its cover. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. See you next time.